Monday. Oh, it's not Monday. Ah, it's Tuesday. It feels like Monday because we're just starting off the week. Welcome. Today we will be having a really fun day, fun event tonight, today, because Kev Choice and Michelle Mushley will be joining the conversation. Hi, hi. Uh, it does feel like a Monday, that's for sure. Um, I've <laughs> been functioning like it is. Oh, hello. Miss Vice, um, Miss Vice Mayor Rebecca Kaplan, thanks for joining us. Gratitude and blessings, yes, yes, Ble- blessings to us all. I hope you all took advantage of this holiday weekend and got to spend some time with family or cleaning your house or um, just enjoying the sun and the fireworks didn't keep you up all night Um, because I know Oakland knows how to throw down with them fireworks. Um, Hi, it's Latifa Simons. Hello, hello. And here comes Kev. I'm going to invite him up now. Um, Did that work? Hey, hey, did that work, Kev? Try one more time. Oh, there it goes. Hey, Kev. Hey, hey, good afternoon. What's up? It's a hat day. What's up? It's a hat day. (laughs) (laughs) You're repping repping Oakland, though. Repping Oakland, Oakland. Even though I don't know how long I'm going to be repping Oakland. Hey. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, it's a whole other thing, yeah. But, you know, and speaking of which, next Monday meals, we're going to have mm-hmm. folks from Asian Pacific Environmental Network and um, folks from um, East Bay, um, <sighs> E-Base, East Bay um, Alliance for a Sustainable Economy. I always forget the acronyms. They're going to come and talk about Howard Terminal and how the community's response is and what does – um, community benefits agreement look like and what folks can what fit folks need to know about it so we're actually going to talk to them on Monday next Monday so I'm excited about that too I'm going to tap in for that for sure I'll definitely yeah. get some info on that yeah 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 how are you doing Kev oh you know I'm doing well just you know recovering from the holiday weekend a lot of things going on family stuff mm-hmm. community. trying to I don't know. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind, but trying to slow down a little bit, but that never. <laughs> but um, trying my best. Type of a, you know, chill week. Yeah, uh, Bleacher Dave is asking, why did you not invite anyone from Howard Terminal CBA Steering Committee? Um, mm-hmm. Maybe that's something we do in the future, but for now, we are going to have our partners come on and talk about it next week. Because eBase and APEN are Oakland Rising partners. And here comes Michelle and Ashley. What's up? Hey, fam. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Kev dropped off. Kev's off, but we're on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's do this one more time. I'll invite him back up. It says, folks from West Oakland, historic black community. Thanks, Bleacher Dave. Um, that might be something that we do. I appreciate you bringing that up. If you want to hit up the Oakland Rising DM and, you know, tap me into somebody, I'll definitely look into talking to them. Hey, Rumani. Yeah, but let's, um, let's say, let's um, introduce ourselves. Um, you know, um, I'm Liz. I'm the executive director of Oakland Rising. Um, I'm really excited to be here today with you both because I love you both so much. Um, You know, Kev, you are like representative of Oakland and the Oakland music and all of the things. And so there's so there's so many things that you do that 
I can't even, there's like a long ass list. Um, like my comms team, when they made the flyer, they're like, this is impressive. <laughs> Man, you know, it's that open hustle. You know, we, we got to keep our hands at so many different things. You know, we, we passionate about, you know, especially when it comes to art and community. So I'm just, I'm just happy to be able to contribute, even be a voice in so many different spaces. Cause that's that's a blessing to me. So I appreciate just being engaged and involved. That's amazing, and that's amazing. And Michelle Mushley also uh, from Oakland, raised here in Oakland, and um, and the Bay, and so amazing poet. And you and I actually met through the Korean Youth Cultural Center back in the day. It's been a minute since we were there, but yeah, I met you there, and so I'm excited that you're here too. Um, and you both are Oakland, City of Oakland Arts Commissioners, and that's exciting. And so I'm really glad to have you both on to, like, talk a little bit about that. But before we kind of, like, jump right into all of that, you know, we call this part of our Monday Meal series. And because I want to make sure I love feeding people. <laughs> and so... Um, I enjoy when I cook something really well and everybody's enjoying it and feels full from it and feels love from that. And so I also want to, but I also know that it's not just about nourishing our body, our bodies and our stomachs and, you know, tasting, good tasting food, but it's about like nourishing our minds, nourishing our souls, nourishing our spirits. So I wanted to hear about like, what are you going to have for lunch today? And... Um, I'm eating an apple while we're talking. So you might hear my knife because I'm cutting it while we're eating. <laughs> and um, and then also just like, what are you doing to nourish yourself? Because, you know, we always hear this word self-care. And mm -hmm. I wanted it to be about self-care because it sounds like just like this one-off thing that you do, right? But what are the ways you're like nourishing yourself every day, whether that's physical, whether that's emotional, whether that's spiritual, what are the ways in which that you're nourishing yourself? And then I want folks in the audience like that are joining us to also jump in, in the chat and tell us how you're nourishing yourselves. What are the, what are you having for lunch? And cause this is us having a talk over lunch. So let's hit it over to Kev first. Let's hear what Kev's doing. Well, um, first off what I'm eating for lunch, I feel like I ate so much food over the weekend, you know, with family barbecue. Cheese <laughs> of potato salad. Like I'm this is like a cleanse week for me. I got my little, you know, my little green smoothie. Nice. You know, spinach, kale, you know, some raspberry, blueberry, that type of stuff. Um, and just eat some fruit. I'm trying to like detox from all of the amazing food, but just, you know, kinda heavy that I ate over the weekend. Um how am I, you know, feeding myself spiritually? I think just trying to, you know, slow myself down. I feel like with all the things that I'm doing, it's, it can be a lot, a little overwhelming at times. You know, mm -hmm. Finding time to, like, wake up in the morning, meditate. Uh, also, my son is in town from Atlanta, so he's here with me for the rest of the summer. Mm -hmm. So just being engaged in that, you know, one-on-one -on -one parent, father thing, that also helps me focus mm -hmm. so gives a different energy and also just yeah just spending time on my instrument as well like now that i have a little downtime i just spend hours on my instrument a day and that also mm -hmm. just helps stay centered you know and um and stay grounded for sure yeah you know because kev you know i'm glad you're talking about slowing down because you're everywhere <laughs> You're doing all the things everywhere. I try to tell him, Kev, <laughs> come on, man. Just take a day for yourself. <laughs> I, I think I, I think I seen you at like three events in one day. I was like, what's up, Kev? Mm -hmm. Right. Boom, boom. Nah, it, like I said, and that's yeah. like an average Wednesday for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we find, we find times. You know, my Sundays, I, I, I play at church. I try to take Sundays for a day to just play and chill. Not have no events. Mm -hmm. My, you know, it's summertime too, so not having to teach. Mm. Okay, this is kind of like my vacation, you know, summer vacation, mm. as you may say. But um, I find my time though. I find my time. 
That's mm-hmm. good. That's good. What about you? Um, what about you, Mush? Tell us about what you eating and what you doing to nourish yourself. Um, I gotta say what's up to Hi Abby, Hi Soul Coach Dancing and Vivica. <laughs> I haven't seen Viv in a minute. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I'm right now. I'm doing a um leftovers from Everett and Jones. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, I ordered like online yesterday, an hour before I got there. And then we all, there was like a whole ass line for another hour just to pick up our food. Everything Damn. Joan was Korak and So I got, let's see, you can see my little, you know, my little baked beans. Nice. And nice. then, um, right, I feel like I'm kind of camping. Like, I'm so not a camper. I'm scared, actually, of the wilderness. I'm such what? a city girl. Yeah. I need to take you camping then because I'm all about go- camping. I need to go with people who really feel, like, comfortable. Like oh, it's yeah. their element because I feel really insecure out there. I'm like, look, that's, me. that's you. Okay, I need to go with you, Liz. I'm all. I don't know how to start a fire. I don't know where the water's at. I need hot food. <laughs> so I feel like this is like a camp meal. I got my beans, my eggs, and rice. <laughs> um, that's right. <laughs> and then I got to balance it out with my big old. Oh, green it's juice. like smoothie day. What's up, y'all? I'm so busy that like. I don't have three or four shows a day like Kev does, but I have like a couple <laughs> things that I got to do every day. And so I um, I drink my way through the day. So I mm. juice everything. I don't juice, actually. I just, I smoothie. I grind everything in the blender. I drink it. So a little bit of, that's where I'm at. And then you'll always see me with an iced coffee because that's just my life. <laughs> 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 and then as far as like, Hi, Steve. I see this here. I see Bay Area boss joined. Hey, um, what do I do for self care? Look, I love. I have a small child. He's eight, mm-hmm. and he talks a lot. He's a Scorpio. Oh, Kev understands. Kev's a Scorpio too. Just smart as a whip. Just talk, talk, talk. So I love being in the car and doing nothing, like not answering any questions right. about life. <laughs> I just like driving. That's what I do. <laughs> and you know what? I'm also like exploring desire. I'm almost 40. Mm. And, and you know, growing up in a Korean, like Korean home, like desires of the body and also in a like Presbyterian home, my grandfather oh. was a pastor. Like the, the body is like a vessel. You're a PK sin. too? Girl. I'm a PK. Are you really? Mm-hmm. Pastor's kids for folks who are like PK. Yeah, oh, who yeah, don't know doctors. that word. Yeah, D- DJ R three and Scorpio for life. Y'all are smart. Scorpios are so smart. Yeah, it's my scary. daughter's a Scorpio. She's terrifying. sharp as a whip. Uh huh. So, mm. my my whole thing is I'm trying to figure out. Okay, what does it mean to desire in a healthy mm. way? Mm. You know, desire mm. food, desire, you know, um, people, desire connection, desire, you know, physical pleasure. All of those things. I feel like I'm re learning at almost mm-hmm. 40 isn't that a trip yes yes like pleasure right just like how to enjoy things and to just also be okay with um <laughs> what's that say we'd say preachers kids yeah exactly pks no badass pks oh, all of us <laughs> badass PKs. are you pk happened. too kev no 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 oh. you call a deacon kid that's um, <laughs> You're okay, yeah. You that's a real thing too. Deaconess, so you know, I was I was definitely at the church, but uh, yeah, that's me. I, they was running from the church. They, we was in the church, but we, <laughs> <laughs> I was around the I was around the corner pool. from the church. Not in the pulpit. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. My my dad's old church is still there. It's still standing. He ain't there no more. But oh, <gasps> yeah, ninety eighth and East Fourteenth, right behind the Riz. fire station. Yeah, what? yeah. Yeah, so hey, hey. but anybody need to know about Korean American churches, come talk to me. I know about them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hello, I kinda, Denise Pate. Denise kinda, Pate's on here, Lewis. Hey, I didn't know hey. Denise IG. That's my first time. <laughs> okay, Pantera's up, and Abby says something What's about Bush. Have you read Pleasure Activism? No, by uh, Adrian Marie Brown, right? I should really get it. 
Mm. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Pete just said, thought you were saying Presbyterian Koreans. Well, there's a lot of them too. So um, yeah, PKs as in preacher's kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, it's like when I see a preacher's kid or I see like a deacon's kids or anybody who grew up in the church that way, it's like, I see mm-hmm. you. I know mm-hmm. what's up. Um, so... Up. <laughs> I went so, to that church. <laughs> um, so you could always find me around the corner. This is when I was a kid and used to smoke cigarettes. I used to be around the corner. You just saw this puff of smoke <laughs> around well, the I, corner. I, I and that's where you. Drink. That's where you could find me. <laughs> I learned how to drink at World Beat on Telegraph in four in twenty seven, back in the day, and at yeah. um, Porno Palace. Wow. This is recorded, isn't it? I should really it watch is. what I say. You should. This is before they carded. You know, we were in Oakland. We would we would come to Oakland to drink because yeah, they wouldn't card us the Korean places. Yeah, they didn't. They mm-hmm. didn't until they got in trouble for it. Yeah, that's true. Um, so let me get us back on track, y'all, because <laughs> I think we could do this for a long time. Um, <laughs> is that? You know, we just we're just coming off of a really big budget win at the city of Oakland, right? And man, y'all, the um the artists really showed up. And Dr. Ayadele and Zinga, our Oakland poet laureate, our yes. first poet laureate, she was saying like she calls it our bat signal, right? And it's mm-hmm. like I, I would just send out a text to y'all, and then it would just be like boom, and half the artists show up. So I just wanted to hear about like what that was like. And it's not the first time, you know, like we've had past budget fights where, you know, folks have really showed up in the past, like Betty Ono um, Gallery and all the other folks just in the community have been just repping for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wanted to hear about you all. Like, how did you all tap in as artists and what are the ways you see like artists really playing a role in this because I often think both in the movement and just in in all the ways like it's really based off this extractive capitalism right it's like it's exploitive because it's like hey I need you to make this poster for me I need you to come and sing Mm. a song I need you to do a poetry thing but it's not like (laughs) there's an incorporation of like art and culture in a thoughtful manner. That's like about creating culture. Right. And so, um, so I wanted to hear about the ways you all tapped into this and then the ways that you think artists played a role in this. And then also, you know, just like the ways in which artists and culture makers, cause we're talking food and all mm-hmm. of those who right? like mm-hmm. um, it's so broad. Um, and then people like who are maintaining cultures that are always being suppressed, right? Uh, so our traditional cultures in in the same ways. So I want to kind of like all put that in one in one bucket, but um, mm-hmm. want to hear from you all as amazing artists and arts commissioners, like what that means for you. Wow, I mean, um, it's it definitely was a journey that you know kind of to me started, especially around this current budget. Um, you know, some of our cultural affairs commissioner works. I think I have to also frame that too, because in, in the beginning I was like, oh, this is the arts commission. It's really mm. cultural affairs. Um. And so we're dealing with affairs of the culture, you know. So mm-hmm. art Get work. it straight. Get me straight. Mm-hmm. But no, that's, that's something for myself. I'm like, oh, we supposed to just represent artists. They were like, no, you got to represent it. And all of these different, you know, sections of community and culture. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it was even important for me to start. Under- but of course, I'm an artist. You know, much as an artist, we come from that spectrum. We have other people on the commission who aren't even artists. You know, they deal in other, maybe they work for organizations mm. or things like that, or maybe they're, you know, other type of cultural practitioners. Um, but I feel like there was a meeting, a cultural affairs commission meeting, and there was conversations going on around this budget and how we can be impactful. And, you know, sometimes in city government, it, it can seem a little, you know, sometimes the process and sometimes the activity of what we could actually do is limited by our positions or by, mm. you know, processes. And I think, right. you know, me and Mush and I, th- I also feel, you know, Faviana, you know, from, a, yes. a, you know, Center of Cultural Power. Mm-hmm. We're talking after me. We're like, you know, we got to really activate 
around this budget and how can we, you know, get money for this, you know, for arts and culture. And they were talking about taking money from all of this and they were talking about all this lack. And we just, you know, started hearing other conversations, Ayadele and the refund people and then, you mm -hmm. know, and Oakland Rising. It's like, how can we bring all of these people together? That's, to me, my role as a commissioner is to listen to the needs of the people and see how I can facilitate us coming together to make something happen. So, you know, and shout out Mush, who's just such an incredible organizer and mind and st strategist. And I'm, I, <laughs> what I need to, I need to be at, blah, 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 where's the Zoom? Where's the link? You know, they, it was so many people who were influential in putting things together. And us as cultural comm affairs commissioners, we just started to meet, gather, uh, uh, started going to city council meetings, started uh, putting out, you know, um, things on social media it was like a whole campaign of all of these people behind the scenes mm -hmm. really unfocused agenda and it was it was beautiful to see how it came together and how my role as a cultural affairs commissioner was able to play a part in that mm -hmm. so i was just trying to listen and help navigate and offer artists in in community help put out information to see where people needed to be to help to make an impact i mean because one of the things you all were a part of was putting together that forum right to talk yeah. about arts and culture in the budget and um i mean how many people showed up for that like 200 and when it was a virtual event right right yeah like we had about 400 folks registered oh shit almost. damn mm -hmm. right. okay pen darvis in the house okay, right that town hall. willis in the house that town hall <laughs> was a, a big turning point because it it saw how we can all come together. We, we put out all the, the information about how cultural affairs department hadn't increased in over 30 years. Zach mm -hmm. needs for the budget, you know, the defund people spoke, the refund people spoke, all cultural affairs commissioner spoke. It was like all of us coming together to express a common interest and a common, you know, desired result. And I feel like that's how we got that. Result. That's right. Yeah. Um, I see Sherry Murphy. Reverend Sherry Murphy saying um, beautiful organizing indeed and made an incredible impact. I mean, what what's your take on it, uh, Mush? Because you played a really big role. Y'all, I had I had like five minutes on that on that on that. There was a call, that panel. I was on that town hall. I was like on this panel. I was like, this is how it, artists do this shit serious because you all had a run a show. Like we had to show up to like do sound check. Oh, yeah. I we don't like, play. I'm serious. Mm. I mean, I think that was one of the beautiful things. So I just want to say, what's up? Um, what's Mr. up, Bobby? David D's in the house. Hey, Bobby. Bobby's in the house. We got so many wonderful friends here. Um, I mean, it started, look, so just for folks who are in Oakland or maybe tuning in and are like, what the hell I saw on Mush and Kev's profiles or whatever that they're commissioners, you know, the city of Oakland hasn't had a formal cultural or arts uh, commission for over almost 10 years. So mm -hmm. we grew, we grew and shout out Roberto Bedoya, who is the cultural affairs manager. So he's embedded within city government um, to essentially regrant um, money to individual artists or arts and culture institutions and festivals across the city. So most of the art the cultural festivals that you see across city art and soul, other neighborhood specific, you know, Laurel District Festival, Street Festival, Temescal Street Festival, all of those things, Black Cultural Zone um, are funded receive funding from the city through his house through his shop mm -hmm. and so he put us together like a year ago and it was like okay uh what are we gonna do we didn't know we you know we're a bunch of artists some people represent different parts of chinatown fruitvale north oak all different parts and we're like what do we want to do i will say that our kind of identity as a commission really popped off when after the Atlanta massacre of Asian women mm. at that point, and I know mm. this is an unlikely segue. What's up, Dom? Dominique uh, Enriquez is the executive director over at Junior Arts and Science Center by the Lake. So shout out What's BIPOC up? sisters, you know, running things in Oakland. You know, uh, I reached out to Commissioner Roy Chan, who uh, represents, who worked with Tommy Wong with Good Good Eats in the Chinatown Cultural District and to Kev. And we said, we need to put something together. You know, we mm -hmm. need a conversation and, and a healing moment. And so that's when we started to kind of shape our role as right. commissioners and as artists and say, look, people, there's a lot of divisive language out here. There's a lot of like Asian versus black, black versus Asian. 
And what do we know to be true? The three of us said, what we know to be true is that at, as cultural practitioners, we have always seen stories of solidarity between us. Always, there's always. always there's always a, a, a reciprocal, like love-based energy in our work, you know, whether yeah. you're doing a concert like That's Ted right. has been doing, or whether you're putting on young, you know, spoken word, international poetry slam festivals. It's That's always right. been love. And so why don't we lift that up? Because that is our unique and distinct strength as cultural activists. And so we did that. You know, I really, pre- I really appreciate you saying that about the solidarity piece, right? Because um, I think that that is Oakland's strength, mm. right? I mean, it's like, you know, there, there's so many disparate communities in yeah. Oakland. And... And there is also so because of that, you know, diversity within the city, not not just like racial diversity, there's economic diversity, um, there's cultural diversity, like Mm -hmm. on so many different levels, right? Like immigrants, you know, born and raised here, you know, like, you know, we now have all of these new gentrifiers, like they're, everybody's adding to you know, Oakland's cultural history. But I think that like art has played such a role and culture has played such a role and Oakland has such a beautiful uniqueness um, that I think um, just like brings bridges. (laughs) I don't know how else to say it, you know? It's what, we are a gem of the world and I'm not trying to be facetious or hyperbolic here, but people come to Oakland that's right. Not because we're t- a, a, a hub for technology, although we're, we are located within that geography, in that right. landscape. Not because, not even necessarily um, for our architecture or anything like that, although that could be, you know, are debatable. People come here because what they see is you, is what you don't see elsewhere in the world. That's right. You see some of the most pluralistic um, kind of, communities coming together in harmony and yeah Mm -hmm. sure there are like just with any urban city or any big place with diverse populations yeah there's conflict and yet there's this what Mm -hmm. comes out of that is this like beauty that always comes from struggle when struggle refuses to um be defeated like when 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 culture persists and says no you're not gonna (gasps) kill us what comes out of that is you know look at every oppressed people across the world and look at what we come up with delicious that's right food. <laughs> that's right beautiful like weaving you know uh, textiles rituals of healing you know it's just that's that's what people come for and so we thought you know kev and the rest of the cultural affairs commission we thought you know what there's it's whack that we have people in city government of electeds even who are tallying and using arts and culture and mm-hmm. saying look at the beautiful murals all across our city mm-hmm and no money is being put behind it. I'm going to give everybody a real quick statistic. We, um, the highest number of funding, the highest amount of funding that the cultural affairs department received. And again, all of this money goes right back out. So it doesn't actually stay in city. It comes right back out. It's a bit of a process, but it, all the money comes back out. The highest amount of funding we received before this year was in 1992 and 1993. It was $1.6 million for the cultural affairs department or what was that? Come on now. Department. That's when I graduated high school. (laughs) Hasn't changed since 1992. That would have been the equivalent of $3 million for cultural affairs funding in the city of Oakland, of which we had not. We we didn't have that. I was also not until this year. Hey, our big, you know, you know, talking points is like, look, you haven't increased the funding for our department in over 30 years. And also, um, I want to answer one of the Mm -hmm. questions. Bleacher Day was proposing because another thing is that they've also de- decreased the amount of people who work in the department. Mm-hmm. Say that, Kevin. By the, you know, the equivalent of 12 full time employees. Uh, and right now we're at like 5.5. So right. one of the big asks was the hiring of two full time employees. That's right. Granted, one, one full time employee. So when you talk about why is there a delay in receiving grants or or he was saying something about nonprofits being able to access city grant funds because there's not enough people in the department to even process the, the right. 
getting that extra full-time employee is going to be a big service. Even if this department had $30 million, they wouldn't That's even right. access that amount of grants because they have like, you know, 5.5 people working in the department. So that was a big win as far as getting an extra, you know, person or full-time equivalent for our department. Um, mm -hmm. That's right. With that, you know, like you were saying, Dave, about uh, the delays with, you know, getting grants and receiving funds. So that's a yeah. big, 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 big win right there. And can I yeah. also add, like, the people mm -hmm. on staff in cultural affairs, like Denise Pate, who is currently on this call, it's dope. Like, we have the dopest staff. We have Roberto Bedoya, who is, like, a thought leader throughout the country. Folks are like, Roberto, what do you think? We have folks like Denise Pate. You, if you are in Oakland and you've ever done arts and culture work or you've ever, you know Denise Pate. Because Denise is for he, for the people right here all the time. Like, she's right here, like, literally on this call. Mm. And it's folks like Neha and uh, Kristen Zarembe. Like, these are our people. Like, they right. show up to the thing, not for, you know, not for right. an accolade. They're here because this is also what they breed and live. And I want to break that down a little bit, too, because just like not just with the cultural affairs division, but for all of Oakland, the city of Oakland, like when we're talking about funding and refunding and investing, reinvesting in programs that have been de disinvestment, if it disinvested mm -hmm. in like parks and recs, like libraries, like cultural affairs, yeah. like public works the same thing all across the board those um those departments have all been defunded over the years and you know part of this very neoliberal agenda you know and i think it's not just unique to oakland it is across the country mm -hmm. um where we begin to prioritize policing over everything right mm -hmm. and the thing that the thing that is about it is like we're trying to refund the community we got $18 million to go into violence prevention from mm -hmm. by redirecting some money that the mayor had wanted to budget towards the That's police right. department. So this is redirecting that back to the community. And I, and what folks need to know is that that is job creation, right? Say and it's, it's a job creation for Oaklanders because Oakland staff, the employees that work for Oakland, like, I don't know, what is it? like 65% or 70% of Oakland, um, city of Oakland employees are Oaklanders. They, they live here. And the majority of our temp workers in Oakland are POC, mm -hmm. right? They're people of color who are from Oakland. Mm -hmm. So it's like when we talk about refunding the community, we're talking about like not only that, but we're talking about creating a job workforce that is going to do work for the city and for Absolutely. all of us. And it's not just like, oh, I'm just, we're just breaking this off so that some artists can get some money to do blah, 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 blah. But this is like, right. this is we're paying a life force. We're paying a workforce of people to do things for the city for our collective good. Right. And I think mm -hmm. that's also missed in the conversation is that this is all for our betterment. It's not like, is trying to like, you know, it's like it's just gonna break off this piece for this little person over here or no. this developer over here. That's right. Right. This is about right. like finding housing, getting programs, getting services, and getting people jobs. Right. I think you Nate oh, go ahead, Kev, please. I and I'm gonna just, you know, like that word reimagining, you know, mm. that's a powerful word. I'm, and I'm glad I'm hearing that in the conversation around the budget around some of the grants. It's like reimagining a just city, uh, reimagining new, new ways to support our community. I think a lot of people are, are kind of just stuck in that fear narrative, like police will protect them or police will serve them. When many of us know that that's not the case, people need jobs, we know that people need arts and culture or better places to congregate and, and be in community and to be based. And it's, it's, it's funny, a couple of times that, you know, city council meetings, I, I tried to bring in the word love. Like, mm. Oh, make, and you, you ended some of our meetings with you playing the piano. It was beautiful. I played the piano on one of our council meetings because I feel like there's a, the, the energy to me is like all the way off. We're trying to have conversations about how we're going to uplift each other, how we're going to heal each other, protect mm -hmm. each other. It needs to be a different vibration. I'm very, I'm very you know, keen to vibration and spaces. And that's, I feel like as a musician, that's, that's my goal. Uh, that's mm -hmm. my goal. 
duty is to bring a different vibration into a space. And mm -hmm. and like you were saying, like these this money is not just going to a department, it's going to people, it's going to communities, it's going to culture, it's going to, to opportunity, it's going to healing, and it's going to people who are leading a different type of energy than a police force is leading with or people who are here to, you know, criminalize or 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 put us into jail or do things like that. So a different energy to me, the the money shift, the big thing was it was shifted to a different energy. On right. How to a better space for us all. That's right. That's right. I love that framing. Like it is a shift in energy, right? Cuz mm -hmm. we're always like talking dollars. Let's get away from that capitalist bullshit. Let's like let's talk about where we're like focusing our attention where we're like pouring our love and our mm -hmm. focus and mm -hmm. within this capitalist system that looks like dollars, right. but it really is about, because I mean, regardless of everything, whatever happens, I know that Oakland's artists and cultural center is going to keep moving. Like y'all are going to continue to create, y'all are going to continue to create beauty and love and spaces for us like kev you put on the black um music matters, music matters. number two mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago right and that was amazing it was beautiful because like right. that that kind of those kinds of events really not only showcase the art but it creates a community space yeah exactly and even you know and thank you for coming out and supporting or even thinking about how the artists transformed downtown you know during the yes like that transformed the whole any like the day after you know that big protest or rally where mm -hmm. a lot of stuff got destroyed i drove down there and i, I was almost in tears you know just yeah. like my seeing it was like it looked like a you know a bomb it went off down there and then yeah. you know, days later weeks later the transformation of that downtown is which we still see today now we got you know, artists' faces on building. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. right. Like right. it's it shifted the whole dynamic of what our downtown looks like, and that's something that's that right. artists did that on their own because they was like, "We yep. got the best way we know how to respond," which is mm -hmm. by our so that, that's a beautiful thing. And you know what? I love that, Kev. And shout out Teresa who just joined us. Teresa Tiagatano is also a dope. Um, What's up, poet. Teresa? Um, hey. artist, activist, uh, been doing a lot of work with Sean Monterosa's family mm. um, to get justice for his death. Um, you know, the thing, I think the thing is, it's like in Western, in Western American thinking, there's mm. hyper individualism. It's totally. like, it's like not all, that hyper, that mentality of like, I do it for myself on my own, in my cubicle, for mm -hmm. my company, mm -hmm. in in this one lifetime that kind of boxing, that organizational boxing also inhibits us to imagine differently. So Chief Cespedes, Guillermo Cespedes, who, who now is running the Department of Violence Prevention, so $18 mm -hmm. million dollars was cut off of OPD's already burgeoning $350 million budget. Just so folks were tapping in, I also want to give folks numbers because there's this like myth that artists don't really do our research or that we may not have data to back this up. One of the first things that Kev and the commission did was we sat down and we got facts and figures. Mayor Livy Schaff was trying to, trying, proposed to give Cultural Affairs Department $2.3 million for next year. 2.3. And then 2.5 With frozen million. positions. With frozen right. positions yeah. for the year after that. We right. were like, that's not good enough. What the Just City budget did was increase that number by no less than $1.5 million and included a staff person. So now we're looking at $3.9 million for the next two years, minimum, minimum, and a full-time staff restored. So, uh, like, okay, I say, why do I say that? I say that because people are really scared right now because there's this really false narrative that, like, OPD was cut. No. These council members are doing a disservice. Nope. They're crazy. Nope. They're out of their mind in Oakland. Things yeah, are going to like, the sky's gonna falling out. out. Or like, ain't nobody going to come out for call. Like, it's just a lot of crazy, you know, the media. Don't, don't believe that hype. $18 million <laughs> does, doesn't mean OPD even lost money. They actually got a $27 million increase. I need to let everybody know. Artists know right. these numbers. They That's got right. a raise. 
what right. we did what we did was we were able to take give them a smaller raise Right? right. And fewer police academies. Why? Not because we don't believe in safety. But part of this whole thing is about when we talk about arts and culture, we are not just talking about murals, although murals are freaking beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. They're essential. Right. They're aesthetically beautiful and they bring community together. But it's also about when we're talking about an economic recovery. That's the right. Artists are the first ones out, fam. That's right. No, but we don't have health care like that. Many right. of us working professionals don't aren't unionized. Mm -hmm. And so. So we are the first out, and then we are also the last to receive federal funding or emergency money. And so a part of our strategy on the commission was to say to our city council and electeds, hey, if you're talking about a just recovery, a budget that really recovers, you have to consider arts and culture workers. Why? Because we are, and shout out Ashara Kundeo of Artists as First Responders, as yep. have said, we show up. We show up. We're there packing the parade. Right. We're That's there right. doing the murals the night after the protest from, uh, when George Floyd was murdered and Oakland just blew up, right? Right. Uh, we're there right at the front line. And so if you don't acknowledge us, we need to organize ourselves and acknowledge our, each other. And so that's when we got together with Liz, Oakland Rising, and traditional, you know, base building grassroots um, coalitions and said, look, artists, we want to get down. We want to organize in a really thoughtful, strategic way. We'll do all the research that we need. Uh, we'll write the right narratives and we'll bring, the, we'll bring as many people from across the city as possible. And this is not just about individual artists. It's about building cultural infrastructure and legacy so that artists in Oakland don't necessarily need to go out and live somewhere else. They don't need to get a 501c3 or a fiscal sponsor from an arts organization in San Francisco. They can stay at home and do all of this. That's right. So that's, that's what right. their organizing was about. Yeah, no, I appreciate you giving that context and dropping those numbers because I think that, you know, the narrative really is out there and what that narrative is really based in is fear, right? And say I that. don't know. That to me, like when I think about what that means for our psyche as a city, when I think about that as a psyche for people, like to function from a place of fear rather than a place of love and compassion mm. is, it's crippling. It, it makes you feel like I can't actually go out. I can't actually go to the lake because it's dangerous, mm. right? I can't actually go down the street because I'm worried about the violence that's going to pop off. And that shit is real. I'm mm -hmm. not going to diminish that. Because I will say that our we had canvassers in, in deep East Oakland knocking on doors, talking to people about vaccinations, right? Mm. And... We had people tell us, and we've had, we not only had it this year, we had it last year in 2020, and we had it in 2019 before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So a economy was already, was already on, the, on the fritz before the pandemic, and then the pandemic hit, and then it really hit us all hard, right? And then we saw this huge spike in violence, right? And I think that that, that fear, right, is really rooted in like, we don't have resources. We don't have places to live, safe places to live, stable places to live. We don't have jobs that are going to be stable. That Oakland Rising, we usually, when we have even temporary canvassers and phone bankers come on our teams for short periods of time, it's super easy to get folks. Mm. But we couldn't get people because people are like, I need a full-time gig mm. with full-time pay, full-time benefits. And I was like, oh, crap. We weren't prepared for that, you mm -hmm. know? And so what does that look like and what does that mean for our communities of like to, to offer hope, right? Mm -hmm. And I, whenever I think about the way music and the way art, like that, why it was so beautiful downtown and all over this city, because there is art all over this city, y'all, um, that they don't get paid and there's no commissions for that shit. People are just popping up everywhere is that that offers the hope that we need. It gives us a really good like magnifying and a magnifying glass sometimes and a mirror on other times. And then other times it's like, like a, like a, a what was that called? Um, 
the ball where you're like looking in the ball for the ball. future. What was that? Crystal ball. Yes, the crystal ball. That's what I thank you. My um, I'm born here and but it's still not my first language. So crystal <laughs> ball, right? Like you know, like being able to look into the crystal ball and like have hope for the future. And I think like arts and culture does that. So when we are like, oh shit, I can't go to the restaurant and eat what I want. Mm. Right? Because it's like, that's how we feel connection. We feel like, wow, I can understand. I can go and have soul food. Because yeah. I didn't grow up with soul food in my house. Yeah, Y'all didn't, maybe Kev may, didn't grow up with Korean food in his house, but now he knows because he grew up in Oakland and went to Korean food. You know, like, mm-hmm. like those mm-hmm. spaces offer a love and an extension of our love and our culture to each other that mm-hmm. I think that we don't get when we just have policing. Right. right. Also, you know, one of the things that I've been, you know, trying to talk to our, you know, politicians or, or organizers are allowing artists, if we were properly funded, like if we had as much money as, as the police or other <laughs> We were able to have every day. And I've traveled the world. I've seen mm. music and art and culture are integrated in other in in these other spaces or how they're right. full, you know, even by the government in some spaces. Right. And we had, you know, all of these festivals that celebrated the diversity of our cultures on not just once a year, like every month or every Friday. Right. There right. Was a, where you could bring your family, you could interact with different people of different cultures. There's music, mm-hmm. there's food. There's art, there's dance, like all of these things that bring us together and like I said, create a different energy. Just imagine how that would how that would feel and how that would be for our community. And across our whole city. Like even one time at a Parks and Recs community uh, meeting, I was like, you know what, we sh- we should have this thing called Love Our Parks. Let's activate every single park with music, art, culture, events, like let's Let's do it. <laughs> like like why we make that happen? Why we got you know, people don't even want to certain don't even want to go into the bathroom in certain parts. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Like, we're 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 begging for pennies, and even though we got that three point nine million, mm-hmm. it's a but if there's much more to go. Like we need to have Say that. Kev. You know, we look at San Francisco; they get thirty million a year. We look at other cities around the world that are that have cultural impacts that that a city like Oakland has, and we know That's how. Right. So we dealing with pennies here, and still making a hip an impact that changes the world. So even if we know that our That's fight. Right. Still got a lot of fight to go, and this mm-hmm. is a increase after 30 years. And you know, places like the Black Arts Movements District getting money, places like Malanga getting money, places right. like stations like you know Destiny, and you know all mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. Black Cultural Zone, Eastside mm-hmm. Arts, like there's so it, many Asian Cultural Center. It, mm-hmm. All these places getting just a little bit just to barely survive. Like right, they right, right. So, and the Red Indigenous support market them. too. Yeah. And in support all these organizations that we just dropped, right? Like, it's not just, yes, the government not must, like, our city government must support these, and we all must support them as well, right? Like, it is, it is, a, it is an and. It's a both and. Absolutely. And I wanted to speak to what you were saying, Kev, because, um, you know, I was doing a presentation to um, the Reimagining Public Safety Task Force about a text program that we did. Um, we're asking people about whether they believed in defunding the police or not. And 67% of 1,100 people that we got in contact said yes. And, you know, what we got attacked with on the, by the, the task force, by some task force member was like, I don't know you. I don't know Oakland Rising. Where have you been? I've never seen your face. I was like, if you gave me $150 million, I would talk to every single Oaklander. Right. I would get every Oaklander in the door at every single meeting i would talk to every single person because i would have 150 million dollars to hire a whole team of people to be talking to every single person so Mm. you know like i i hear you on that like what could we do with 150 million dollars in art Mm -hmm. and our parks and our libraries what would that mean for us that's what we're moving for this is this is like a first step and i feel like it's it's also been very powerful for everyone involved in this artist in action to like, you know, celebrate the win, but know that there's much more work to be done. And that work right. is already already happening, you know. So but and it's, this is it's just a, the beginning. 
Right. That's it right. really, really is. And also, like, when we say, yes, invest, like, defund in OPD and invest in arts and culture and invest in infrastructure, invest in housing, invest in um, all of these ways that we want to care for our city and the people mm -hmm. who are most neglected systemically in our city. It's That's not right. a, it's not like, let me take money away from the community. That's it's right. This, it's an entire paradigm shift to say everything, every, we are in the richest country in the world and the richest region in the world. Mm. So Talk about please, it. Tell it. Tell please it. Please don't get caught up in this lie that we are, there's this budget shortfall. No. Okay. No, we have enough. Now, if you know, as a, as a poetry teacher, I used to always tell young people, you have to write your story and what justice looks like in your story, what love looks like in your story, because literally nobody else will do it for you. That's right. I mean, they will, but you won't be at the center of that story. And the that's same right. is true. And that's one of the things that I think Kevin and I really, really realize is that as artists, we have to fight for ourselves. And we have to believe in the value that we bring to this city because no one else was naming it. For the last year, we had been on city council calls and nobody was naming arts and culture as a value when we were talking about reimagining public safety. We thought, Ooh. isn't that a trip? We're the ones who are always at the parks during murals. We're right. the ones in West Oakland at Defermary Park doing Life is Living, affirming life that, and those are, practices. Because <laughs> like, that, okay. that's, that's violence prevention, right? It's like when you, the first violence prevention program that I ever think about is art. It's like sports, arts, music, right? It isn't like counseling. <laughs> it, it, the, it, it's those programs that like gr grab young people in, right? And give them a place to express themselves. And, and it, it, what I really love about what both of you all do. And I, I want to just also say this one thing before we kind of begin to come to a close is I don't want to say this is a starting point. I think this was, um, you know, a place along the path that our path widened mm. because there were a lot of people prior to this who've been working for decades, not only on this, but have been adding to the conversation, adding to the conversation, adding to it and adding to it. And yes, I, we, we definitely heard, you know, folks this time because I feel like we went, these people who have really paved the road were like chipping away, chipping away. And then suddenly we're at this place where it's like, bam. And the, like all of these people are like, we can't wait no longer for this tiny little road any longer for us to walk in a straight line to Look. get through but it's like we need to break through this and so now the the gate is open the path is wider where we can mm. all walk side by side mm. and so I just want to name that and then I also want to just name like that that's what arts and culture is and I believe that the Viol Department of Violence Prevention has made a commitment to like giving a certain amount of that 18 million over the next two years specifically to arts and cultural programming, right? So that aren't traditional, like what we would think as violence prevention programs, but are like, this is an investment and these That's are the right. investments we're gonna make um, because we have not made that investment. And I mean, he's talked about like, if he just got $30 million, what he would do, like 30 million a year, what he could do um, with his department who is doing amazing work, right? With yeah. violence interrupters and, you know, community ambassadors and all That's of the right. things That's and right. all of the programs that have been doing this fucking work mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. right? That I, they have mm -hmm. been doing that shit for mm -hmm. a long ass time. I want to, to everybody who's on this uh, live, if you don't know, look, Google Department of Violence Prevention, City of Oakland, Chief Guillermo Cespedes. And the reason why is because, again, you got you to gotta know when good leadership is running the ship. Guillermo Cespedes, his whole thing is like, you know, he's traveled and done violence prevention work across the country. But what he noticed specifically in, in South America was, you know what, there was a lot of like, prevention or like a harm reduction based on what wasn't there and what was mm. missing mm. and his is an asset based approach much like you know frary and educators like kevin myself if you're a critical educator you go into a place where others have deemed it a deficit and you say what is working right we don't come in and try to recorrect what mm. is working and so that's, that's right. his approach and so 
to me, that is an indication that that you put money in arts and culture and people because culture connects us in ways. Right. I'll sit for 10 minutes in front of Kev's thing and look at the person next to me, like at a concert. And suddenly we're like, and they're like this united. Yes. You'll go to a poetry <laughs> slam. You'll hear three poems that are just. And different. they're everyone's just like this. <laughs> suddenly it, it, it you know time and space collides and what would have taken maybe three years to get that story or that sense of connection i've gotten it three and a half minutes that That's right. is truly the power of arts and culture and the more connections that we have truly transformative connections and relationships and love that's when you care and when you yep. care is when you want to look out for each other and that's that right. to me is about public safety not looking the other way because one of the biggest crises that we have in Oakland and in this country is bystander culture. And I know this from studying the research on Asian American violence. That's right. In the last uh, 12 months, really. It's, mm. We record it, we see it, but nobody is going to intervene when a 92 year old grandmother's being beat with her own cane. Right. The, the, the only thing we'll do is record it. That right. also needs to shift. And right. I believe culture has, um, is one of the answers to get us to that place where we feel like we want to protect one another in ways that we don't currently that's right and we're connected to each other that's right that's right. so i want to close us out i really appreciate you both for coming today joining me during your lunch hour and talking and i'm sure you and i the three of us and all of the people here can like if we could be in person this would be we'd be chopping it up but <laughs> i for a long ass time right and um and we could be doing this over food and all that and so i can't wait for us to do that at some point but um, I also wanted to just hear, like, I know y'all have some things coming up. I know, Kev, you have a show next week. I know there's other things y'all are doing. So, you know, shout out to you all. You, this is your chance to, like, the last few minutes to tell us what you all are doing so that folks can tap into that, too. Um, and, yeah. So, Kev, you want to lead off with us? Let us know where people can catch you. I got a uh, yeah, big show. And uh, just thanks for having me as well. This is great just to talk with y'all. Um, I got a show July 16th, next, not this Friday, but next Friday at the New Parish. It's with uh, my two men. It's, it's the hardest working man. Got two men. Uh, <laughs> which is kind of like, you know, the band I've been rocking with for, you know, over 10 years. You know, we everything from hip-hop to jazz to soul, R&B. And then also my, um, my other collective, Black London, uh, with two incredible musicians, Howard Wiley and Mike Blankenship. And um, our band is going to be performing it well as well at the New Parish, uh, July sixteenth, eight p.m. Get your tickets, come check us out. It's going to be a, it's going to be a dope night. It's good to see that venues are opening again, and you know, because that was another battle that we fought over this pandemic of just spaces not being able to be open, and you know, trying to get funding and you know all of that. So it's good to see spaces being open again. So please, you know, come out and support because it, it means a lot for the arts and culture community. And musicians have people come in and you know support us as we get back into performing. I got my ticket. I'm there. Let's go. I got my ticket. I'm there too. What's up? And I Bobby, Bobby got her ticket. Yes, yeah, she did. It's about to be a, a party. Ooh, we need we need that. Jennifer Josh show was so amazing and powerful. I don't know if y'all made it to that, but I did. That was amazing. I couldn't. I was under the weather, but this is gonna be the first indoor concert that I go to. I think yours. Oh. Yeah, we, we need these moments. We need them. We yeah. Need them. Yeah. They have all the doors open. Like, it's not like you're all in this tight little sardine box, y'all, <laughs> just, to, just to be clear. They are doing all the things that are safe. You know, we're not going to be like all up in, you know, it's not like this. It's like open air. They like open all the windows and all the doors and stuff like that. So we can all be there, be safe. And, um, yeah, and no one's looking at you sideways if you have your mask on because you want to be a little safer. So, yeah, you know that Delta variant is out there, so you know, you know, just show up the way that feels good for you and that respects sure. the people around you. Oh, what oh. you doing, Moosh? What um, are you doing? I'm doing lots of stuff, but you know, um, I'm performing next month. I was looking up the date because. It happens every once in a while. I'll get up on a mic again. I'll do some poetry. Hey. Uh, Saturday, August 14th from 4 to 5.30, I'll be over at the OACC, which is the Oakland Asian Cultural Center for the Black Arts Movement uh, Business District's BAM Fest. Yeah. So this is hosted by Dr. Ayo uh, uh, Dr. Ayo uh, Dele. Zinga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, I think there's a lineup of artists, but it's part of the BAM Fest. Um, 
shout out to Lisa Evans, who's the organizer, and Dr. Nzinga, who is the kind of founder and the curator of, of the event. And so um, what I love about Dr. Nzinga is that, she, so she is spearheading, you know, the city recognizing the Black Arts Movement District as, a, as right. an official cultural hub. That's that, right. Uh, that can get funding and recognition and all of that stuff. And um, she is also thinking frequently about how to formalize that kind of identity, that cultural identity for Chinatown, for Fruitvale, mm, mm. and other parts of, the, of Oakland. And so That's I really right. got to shout her out and show her lots of love for being kind of a mentor to me and a leader for a lot of us kind of younger yes. artists who are really yes. trying to engage civically to push the dial on how the city invests in arts and culture. So shout out to Dr. Nzinga. That's right. And she was on with us a couple, a couple weekends, ago, weeks ago um, on Monday meal. So you could check out all of that. You can also go to oaklandrising.org slash donate. If you want to give some to Oakland, to Oakland rising, to c keep supporting this work that we're doing. And then, um, just to FYI, we will have a Monday Meals next week uh, talking about the A's and Howard Terminal. But then we're going to go on break for a few weeks. So it's a good chance for folks to catch up on old old Monday Meals that we've done in the past, but also um, just catching up with our artists and other things that folks are doing around the city. And um, But we'll also be putting out a little survey to see like what you all think about our Monday Meals and like how the this IG Live series is going. And what are some other topics that you all want to see? And um, just, you know, thinking ahead, just last one last thing, Kevin, I'll get you, um, oh. is that um, sure. that uh, we're thinking about what are the ways in which we take care of us? And that's going to be another series of, like, discussions with people talking about food justice, talking about, mm. like, violence prevention, talking about, like, city, you know, amb neighborhood ambassadors and all of those kinds of things and what those things mean. But go Ooh, ahead, Kev. That. Oh yeah, just sometimes I don't remember all the things I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many. All right, tomorrow I'm actually doing something with the uh, the East Bay Asian Local Development Corporation, um, the Voice of the Healthy Neighborhood. Multi. I'm gonna be in a conversation with our new youth Port Laureate. Uh, yeah. Port Laureate and another Vice Youth Port Laureate, just having a conversation about uh, you know, creative community and just uh, getting to know them better. Um, and also uh, next, I want to say next Monday, I'm doing something with Hip Hop for Change. Uh, another conversation about uh, Black and Asian solidarity. So just follow me on IG right here. You know, you'll right, see it. Right, right. You'll, you'll find all the stuff I'm doing for sure. Y'all yeah, need to follow Kev because that's what's happening in Oakland. <laughs> he, uh, he is what's happening in Oakland. I know. <laughs> it's like what, wherever what's Kev is, on? there's something know. happening. Yeah. <laughs> all of us. It's, all, it's, it's good community with all y'all it's, it's inspiring well thank you Can so much thank you to you liz oh yeah thank you to liz for sure <laughs> like thank you oakland rising for leading us too as like you know and bringing us into the larger coalition work that you're doing with oakland rising and just for believing in arts and culture as an integral part of organizing and, and all of the kind of the people's asks that have been oh. made through the refund. And so thank you, Liz. You got to give credit where credit's due. Our organizers don't get, they either get all the love or they don't get any. Most times they don't get any. And I just need to, yeah, on behalf of Kev, I commission yep. all the artists. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, you know, I am, I am just one of my, amongst many. And I am, uh, and Oakland Rising was in a big coalition with folks that were moving all kinds of stuff in all kinds of ways. And I think, that is the heart of Oakland, right? Is like mm -hmm. the organizers. Um, and yeah, so I appreciate you saying that much. And also like we are just one of many. And I just want to shout out to all of our, you know, partner organizations that are doing that work and our coalition work too. So uh, cast, you know, who was, oh, yeah. that's right. And like we said earlier, Fabiana's cultural power, like those, those us all coming together really, the heart of what we saw this victory for arts and culture yeah shout out Vanessa right. Wong shout out um, yeah. Thais Wortham Melanie um, yeah. Heroku like these are all folks it's like it happens behind the scenes you know late for night sure. Google Docs <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to send another freaking Google Doc oh what are, we're doing a Google Doc okay let's do it oh, no, no. no more Google Docs y'all no more no more spreadsheets uh, okay well I got love for you all 
Um, if you haven't eaten lunch, go out and eat lunch. Take care of yourselves. Um, and really nourish yourselves. Nourish mm. your mind. Nourish your body. Mur- nourish your soul and your spirit and your hearts. Um, and got love for you all. Pew, pew. Love y'all. Bye. Gotta hit the lake. <laughs> I mean, running the lake all the time. That's the only time I see her is like we be out running the lake. So. Oh yeah, me and Kev. That's that's our meeting. That's our office. I'll meet you at the lake. Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just stand in one place because I don't run. I'll just stand and I'll just watch you run by. So. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have a Bye. Day.